Hi, this is Pete O'Connell, and in this tutorial I'm going to be explaining a few of the techniques that I use to rotoscope in After Effects. So I've got some footage here of a van driving down the street, the one here with the ladder on the roof, and the first thing I'm going to do is keyframe its position on a few keyframes, just to bring it into center. This is going to make our rotoscoping a little bit easier. Maybe like that. Going to need to do about 10 of these frames, I'd say, probably. And a few more on this side, just to bring it into center. And then later on we're going to invert this position keyframing on our mask so that it follows the unposition keyframed footage. Okay, that should do. Alright, so we're going to now make a new solid on top. Turn its visibility off and lock the layer that has the footage. Set it to half resolution so that all of our frames will load into the RAM preview. And by <coughs> loading them into the RAM preview, like this, what you see this green line loading up here, by loading it into the RAM preview, I'm going to be able to scrub pretty fast and uh, see my roto mask moving. Because even though the gray solid's visibility is off, we will still be able to see the roto mask on this layer that we're going to be making. And we're going to start off by making just a simple four point mask on a few keyframes that basically follows the movement of the car. And we're going to add extra frames, extra points onto the mask once we've made our initial four point mask on these keyframes that I've kind of arbitrarily uh, chosen down here. So just a few more to go, and then we'll be able to scrub our timeline pretty quickly here. So you see, once we've got it in there, we can go back and forth very quickly. And this is 1920 by 1080 footage we're using here. So you can have pretty big footage and get a pretty snappy update as long as you load everything into RAM. I can't actually accidentally move anything either since this layer is locked and this layer is turned off. And if I would have moved something, or if I could move something, I would lose my whole RAM preview. So it's good to keep it in this state because you can you can uh, rotoscope very fast without having to worry about losing all the RAM preview that you've created. Okay, so let's get started. So choose the gray solid, hit G to bring up the pen tool make a few points here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so I can see better what I'm doing. And all right. Made my first roto shape for this keyframe here, which actually isn't one of the ones underneath here, but from now on I'm going to just stick to the keyframes I made here for position by using J and K to hop between them. I'm going to choose my solid layer so I can see my mask moving. And start to move these back into position. So these have to always follow the ladder and the ladder shadow. So J and K, oops, I accidentally hit H. doing a pretty good job of following it anyway because of the position keyframing that I applied earlier. I'm looking okay, I guess. I'll just hit P here so we can just see that one property position. So look my solid again. And keep moving these more or less into position. Alright, I'm going to hold down Option and click my mask to select all the points. Okay. I'm going to 
click out to deselect all points, and that way I can select individual points. And keep moving these mask points back into position. And now I'm going to start adding points. So here I need a point for the front of the car. I'll go back, and I have to be pretty consistent about the position that I put these in. I'm going to start using the arrow keys. So I've got one hand on the JK keys and one hand on the up and down, back and forth arrow keys, and that's going to speed things up and be pretty accurate. All right. It, I need one at the back here too, so again I'm just using the arrow keys and I can do this only because I have everything loaded into a RAM preview down here. You wouldn't be able to do that if you were trying to rotoscope on the same layer that the footage was on. All right. Oh, I think I'll use my pen tool. That's better for doing real finessing stuff. I mean, I'll use the cursor to move these points around. All right. Back here, back to the arrow keys. Okay, I think it's time to have a look at this in motion. I'm going to hit spacebar, and now I can actually see my mask moving along with the van, see where the problems are. So up front, I need a couple more keyframes. See if it's slipping really badly anywhere. Yeah, it's kind of slipping back in here. So I'm going to hit hold down option and move the whole thing all together. I'm going to use page up and page down to scroll back and forth through time. I can see here I definitely need a keyframe holding down command to create a new keyframe. I'm going to use J and K to only create, only move the new point on the keyframes that I've already created. You want to keep this as sparse as possible in terms of keyframes. Otherwise, every time you add a new point, you have to add it for all those points, and it can get a little bit tedious. All right. So this has to come out. So I think we're looking pretty good here. Okay, looks like it's slipping here. Maybe I can get away with just doing that. Yeah, this one needs to come up a bit going to do an expansion on this mask so it doesn't have to be perfect. I think that's just about good enough for the... Mm, maybe we better put one back here to be on the safe side. Pull that out. Yeah, and after this, it's not going to be a big deal. Once it goes around the corner here, it's only important for the first few here. All right, so we've got a mask and we've got a keyframed van. Just put a K for keyframe there. I'm going to bring my footage back in. It has no position keyframes on it. I'm going to copy this layer. Drag this underneath. Kind of a copy for safekeeping. I'm going to make an expression between the anchor point of the solid and the position of the keyframed footage. Just a direct expression. And so what I end up with, if I turn, if I bring the keyframed fan to the bottom, what I end up with is the mask moving along with the van. If I turn that off, I actually, this is what my mask actually looks like without any motion keyframes on it. But now, since I have an expression between the anchor point and the position of the keyframed van, I'm actually inverting 
the position keyframe that I put on here, and that makes it match up. And you can use this technique also if you're going to uh, use uh, the motion tracker. You can invert it in the same way. If you want to uh, rotoscope a person's head or something and you track their eye, you can use this technique of inverting the uh, anchor point versus the position. So now that we've got the car and the roto, uh, now we've got the roto mask properly over the van, we're going to set this to alpha mat. You can see it's pretty sharp there, so what I'm going to do in my mask, hitting M to bring up the mask I've created, I'm going to hit Shift, Command H to hide the on-screen controls. I'm going to feather the mask out quite a bit, let's say 20 pixels, and make an expansion of about 10. So that's that's why I didn't need to make my roto so tight on the on the van. Okay, so we've got this comp ready to go. I've got my clean plate, which is a shot of the same scene from exactly the same angle, which has no cars in it, and I'm just going to pull my van comp on top of this. Hit Option Home to bring it back to frame one. So I've got a van, I've got a clean plate, and they should pretty much match up. So what I'm going to do is make some copies of my van comp and s offset it in time like this. I'll maybe put this at half res so I can get a bit quicker update. Don't have to be perfectly distributed. A little bit of variation might might sell it a little better. Anyway, there we go. I've got a big caravan of these vans going along the street. So then, if I hit zero on the numeric keypad, we can get a look at this uh, comp. And uh, yeah, so in not too much time, we were able to create a reasonably photorealistic comp of a bunch of the same van driving by on the street using uh, rotoscoping in After Effects. So I hope you found this uh, tutorial helpful. My name is Pete O'Connell and uh, see you next time.